Hey everyone, some of these benchmarks are going to be quite surprising, promised, because in this video we are directly going to compare the two main versions of the MSI Claw against each other, one with the Core Ultra 5 and the other one with the Core Ultra 7. This is Hubwood. Both versions were running with the newest available drivers and BIOS versions and I've tested both models with 20W and 40W which basically translates to the super battery mode and the extreme performance mode. Keep in mind that it's not yet possible to manually set the VRAM size for the MSI Claws. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more gaming handheld and gaming laptop reviews and comparisons. Now what I did not test is disabling specific cores via the advanced BIOS settings as this wouldn't be done by the majority of the people out there I guess but it is certainly something to keep in mind as well. To be fair, the drivers still aren't very good and the performance you will see here can already be better in the future. So if you're watching this video maybe later in 2024, these numbers might be a bit misleading. But then again, to repeat myself, Intel hasn't exactly been generous with mobile GPU driver updates in the past. Oh and PS, there is no difference in battery time for these two versions as they just use the same wattage anyways. And now without further ado, let's take a look at the benchmarks. For Cyberpunk 2077, I was testing both medium and low settings with activated XCSS on performance. And in this case, I was using the integrated benchmark to do so. And these numbers are pretty interesting to begin with. The Core Ultra 7 version benchmarks will be displayed in blue, including the 1% lows in lighter blue, and the same goes for the Core Ultra 5 version in purple. In contrast to the ROG Ally, the lower spec Core Ultra 5 version actually seemed to outperform the Core Ultra 7 version when I was using the 40 watt mode on low settings. This might be due to issues with the number of cores or the power balance between the CPU and its iGPU. But the game seems unplayable to me on both versions as the 1% lows are just terrible. The game just is a stuttery mess even when using XCSS on performance, and especially on the lower TDPs. For Apex Legends I was using the training area with a predefined parkour to ensure I could directly compare the same situation over and over again. In this case I was only testing the lowest settings at 1080p. And again, the Core Ultra 5 version seems to be a bit ahead, but this time only at the lower 20 watt TDP, in which case the 1% lows aren't great. So using the 40 watt mode would make a lot more sense and actually gets you a stable 60 FPS plus in both cases, whereas the difference between the two is quite small. And of course, using 720p or 900p could make a difference as well. In Fortnite I was testing the game at 1080p using the game's performance mode and the lowest possible settings within that mode. I was playing a full match and used the replay of it to benchmark both handhelds. And as you can see here, the Core Ultra 5 version was again a bit faster, at least on the lower TDP. The 1% lows aren't great in both cases, which means there are some micro stutters every now and then, but it is kinda playable in general with over 120 FPS when using the extreme performance mode, meaning you can actually make good use of that 120Hz screen with these settings. In Hogwarts Legacy, I was using my usual benchmark run into the Forbidden Forest at 1080p with FSR set to performance, both on medium and the low settings. And this time, the Core Ultra 7 version was faster in all scenarios. Especially at the 40 watt and low combo right here, it was ahead by around 17%, while that shrank to 12% on the low settings and to only 3% using the medium settings at 40 watt. But it is playable on both devices and able to keep a steady 30 FPS plus in some of these scenarios. For Red Dead Redemption 2, I was using the integrated benchmark at 1080p with FSR and performance while running the game utilizing the Vulkan API. Both versions were pretty close in this title with no or only a few percent difference with a slight advantage for the Core Ultra 7 version, but certainly pretty small and maybe not even worth the $100 upgrade for the Core Ultra 7 version. 
Now, this is probably one of the only titles where the MSI Claw was able to beat the ROG Ally in my recent benchmark test, so if you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check that one out next. And overall, it is quite playable and working really okay, I guess. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I was once more using the integrated benchmark tool with the DirectX 12 API at 1080p, while both versions haven't been able to get 60 FPS on average in that case. However, the Core Ultra 7 version had a small lead in all scenarios, around 11% when using the low wattage at the low preset to only 5% when I was testing the medium preset at the claws higher wattages. Also worth noting that on the lower 20 watt mode, the 1% lows are pretty bad and the game seemed to be quite stuttery. Well, once again, it could make a huge difference using 900p or 720p without FSR to get a lot more FPS. In Call of Duty Warzone, I was playing a regular Battle Royale match for around 5 to 10 minutes for each test at 1080p with FSR on performance using the game's minimal graphics preset. I was quite surprised that even here, the Core Ultra 5 version was actually at least faster by around 9% when using the 40W mode. Really wondering what is actually causing this, especially in such a game where the CPU should actually make a difference. The 1% lows were quite bad and you really don't want stutters in a game like that where every millisecond counts on both uh, devices. It's really hard to say if that performance is good enough to even really play the game. In Starfield I was using my usual benchmark run through the first bigger city in the game at 1080p with FSR 3, frame generation and VSR activated. Overall, the game is at least playable with around 30 FPS on average and even a bit above when using the lowest preset at 40 watt. though I have to point out that at su such low FPS, the frame generation feature is causing some input latency. So maybe you would need to use 720p and FSR at the same time in that case. And maybe Intel is really going to deliver some driver updates for this title since it's so new after all. For Forza Horizon 5, I was once more using the game's integrated benchmark run at 1080p with FSR turned off. The Core Ultra 7 version was a bit faster in all scenarios, but not by a lot. Only 2% on the medium preset with 40W and 4% on the low preset when using the same 40W performance mode. Also, it is worth noting that the Ally is performing on a completely different level in this title for sure. The MSI claw really is left behind and destroyed in that case. And last but not least, I fired up the integrated benchmark for Far Cry 6 at 1080p with FSR turned off and this time there literally was no difference between the two when using the low preset. Only at the medium preset and the super battery mode, the Core Ultra 5 version seemed to fall behind by a lot. But all the other scenarios were basically identical with the exception of the really bad 1% lows I had on the Core Ultra 7 version with the 40 watt mode. Most likely to some single bigger stutter event. I have to point out that without FSR none of the two was able to get 60 FPS on average with a maximum of only 43 FPS. So again 900 or 720p would probably make a lot of sense here. And that's all for today. It's quite surprising that in so many cases the Core Ultra 5 version was actually faster. That is absolutely not the case for the ROG Ally and its low-cost Z1 CPU version when compared to the Z1 Extreme. But that could actually mean that the Core Ultra 7 version is yet way behind its actual power if MSI and or Intel are able to fix those issues in the future. Nonetheless, I would not recommend getting an MSI Claw yet especially considering the much higher price the MSI Claw has until today when compared with the ROG Ally, the Legion Go and the Steam Deck. But both of these factors can of course change for the better in the future. So now I know I'm repeating myself, but we'll have to wait and see. But then again, all of this won't change the other major issue I had with the MSI Claw, for which you can find out more in my dedicated review if you'd like to watch that afterwards. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel or leave a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.